if memory serves, we were looking, the next thing we we're going to look at were menus. And we we're going to spend a minute looking at menus the old way they did it. But probably more important is the new way that you will do it. The Dito app is a little bit old, and it did it the old way. Um, the difference is, is that at a, um, up to a certain version of Android, uh, an Android device was supposed to have a menu button. All right, that went away, where, um, where Android devices don't have to have a menu button. All right, which means that there might not be a menu button to press. All right, so what you have usually is, and again, I think my phone is dead, but you have sort of a software little button up there on the action bar, it's called. So if you notice, a lot of the activities that we'll be looking at will be action bar activities. Does anyone have a USB thingy that I can plug in? Charger? No. no. You can plug it right into the computer, though. It'll charge your USB. Yeah. Just not very quick. I have to. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. I usually have like five of them in my bag. I looked and I did not have any. Right. Okay, so we're going to look at menus. We're going to look at it the old way. And then we're going to look at it the new way. And then I decided last semester that we could have a lot more fun in this class than we had been having. So we'll talk about having more fun in this class after we cover menus. I'm ready for fun. This, this is the book that you guys should use. It's just a bunch of Java-based games. Nice. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right, let's look at the flag game. And again, I'm going to I'm going to go over this because there's a lot in similar between the old and the new. Um, but um, we also are going to look at an easy way to do it. I posted a link to Angel that talks about doing menus the new way. some interesting code in it that I encourage you to read. All right. But we're just going to focus on the menu section of it. What's, what's interesting the way this does this is how it decides what answers to put in the list of answers, right? Because you have to include the right answer, right? And then you have to include depending on how many options you've picked, either either two wrong answers, five wrong answers, or eight wrong answers. So it does sort of a unique way of doing that, where it effectively puts the right answer in the first position of an array. It like sorts the array, or it randomly sorts the array, shuffles the array. Um, it um, puts the right answer in the first position, grabs the first three, six, or nine, and then shuffles those so that the right answer isn't always in the first position. So it's kind of clever. Take a look at that because the next assignment that we're going to have relates to um, a card game. So you're going to need to to shuffle stuff within the card game. All right. Here we have a private Boolean on create options menu. Method, And again, what this does is this adds two options to the menu. And it gives each of those options an ID. Choices menu has an uh, uh, ID of menu.first. Regions menu has a regions uh, menu ID, which is one more than that. 
So this is what adds the two menu options to the menu that pops up. So this is an old device, so it has a menu button. When I press the menu button, there I get down there the two menu selections. And they're each assigned an ID because when I click on the device, uh, or I make a click on the option, the code has to know which option got picked. So the code that does that is here, on options item selected menu item. We grab the ID of the menu item that was clicked, and again, that's either choices menu ID or regions menu ID. And based on that, we do our thing. And what is our thing? Our thing is to go and pop up an alert box. Um, alert boxes are sometimes called modal windows, M-O-D-A-L. That means that they have to be resolved before you can go on. It's like an alert box. If a browser pops up an alert box, you can't like click anything else on the page until that gets dismissed. Well, when we click this, all right, notice we have then our options, three, six, or nine, and that's a modal window. I can't do anything until I make my choice. Likewise, if I hit select regions, I get a modal window. Again, can't do anything with the options where I can turn on and turn off the different regions. So we have two things going on here. We have on create menu, on create options menu, where we go in and we specify the menu options that we're adding. We then have an on options item selected where we have the code in there to process each of the two menu selections. All right. So these two events which exist on the activity class allow us to pop up a simple menu. All right. The preferred way to do it is to do it via a menu on the action bar. And let's see if I have an example of that in one of these. trying to find one that I can show the example. installed any apps on here in a while, so maybe none of them do. All right, let's look at the example then that I posted to Angel, and I posted an, uh, to Angel uh, an example from Dev's 
our developers Android The most embarrassing part of this is looking through all the stupid YouTube videos that I was playing while I was napping. The worse I feel, the dumber pop music that I listen to when I'm like relaxing. So to give you an idea how I'm feeling today, I was listening to the Archie singing Sugar Sugar, the song from the 60s. They're not even a real band, all right? They're cartoon characters. They're not even real people, let alone a real band. All right. This talks about the change for menus. Android, Android power device is no longer required to provide a dedicated menu button. All right. So what we are going to do for our menus is we're going to do similar to what we do with other layout items. That is, we're going to create the XML for a layout for our menu. It gives a good rationale why this is a good idea. Especially key is it separates the content from menu for the menu from the application's behavior. It allows you to create alternative menu configurations for different platform versions and so on. All right. So you could create a different menu um, for a bigger device than a smaller device simply by using the resource qualifier. Here's the XML options, basically three parts. A menu, which is the root node menu item, and then there's a group where you can group them together if you had choices in your menu that were related. And then you have a list of these. Here's an example of a simple file menu. Create new, open. It has a menu. menu item, and underneath that there is a sub-menu. This one's probably even a, a simpler one, start a new game and help, so just underneath the XML is, is one. Now, how do we bring this to life? Well, the way we bring any XML to life within our Android application, we use an inflator. And in this case, we're going to use a menu inflator to inflate a menu for each menu type. And code down here, public boolean on create options menu, menu. Same method as before. The difference being that we actually go and inflate the menu to create the physical screen for the XML, the physical screen from the XML, the physical menu items. Do you know why it returns a, a Boolean? Um, why it returns a Boolean? Um, in general, methods that return a Boolean do so um, to indicate that they successfully completed. Now, in, in a case like this, there's probably really nothing that can go wrong with this code, all right? Um, and therefore, it's just defaulted to return true. Whereas if you had, for example, if you had some 
database interactivity to create the menu, let's say. All right. Let's say that there was a query that was run to get the options for a menu. Maybe you had regions to choose from, and the regions were stored in a database. Well, any kind of like extraordinary functionality like that, that could fail, right? It could be an issue hitting the database or whatever. So in something like that, there'd probably be conditionals that would look at and see that, you know, hey, did this work or not? All right. Handling click events is roughly the same. Public Boolean on item selected, menu add, switch, item get, item ID, and then we can do our thing. So really the same two methods within our activity, but an extra XML file instead of simply adding to the menu that way. have a listing about other menus listed here on what you can do and so on. And it is, uh, what was good about this source and to, to work your way around it is that sometimes I find sort of like the definitive documentation as being not the clearest documentation. For example, if you go to Oracle's Java site, it's thorough, but it isn't particularly um, easy to use. Whereas Android's documentation uh, on the Android platform is pretty straightforward. Yeah. All right, and it's pretty easy to use. They have to. Most, most of the people looking at this are 12-year-old kids. Know, kids <laughs> well, hey. We get the benefit of it, too, because, yeah. you know, um, it's almost impossible to make something too simple, yeah. right? I mean, if you, if you read this and say, oh, that was too easy of an explanation, make it a little more confusing next time, you know? Yeah. So if a 12-year-old can understand it, then then certainly we, um, we um, intelligent, sophisticated adults can, all right? Okay. Let's look at any questions on this. Um, again, you, you uh, I think the latest op the latest assignment requires you to create a menu for turning the animations on and off. All right. And again, what you'd have is you'd simply have a Boolean attribute, and then you would allow you'd pop up a menu that would allow the user to check animations on or animations off. All right. So with the code that we have in the flag example and the adaptation we've made here, you should be able to do that piece. I spent all my time on the animation. I'm sure you did. <laughs> all right. Let's look at your next assignment, because your next assignment, I think, is kind of fun. I just don't remember how I've carved it up, because it's going to be a several-week assignment. Yes. Okay. yes. First of all, is there anyone morally opposed to gambling? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we all gamble every time we walk outside. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, and again, um, I had I, I have had had students that for their religious beliefs, if it was a conflict, we were able to adapt assignments. It wasn't a gambling one, oddly enough. It was. I don't remember which Christian uh, denomination like doesn't celebrate birthdays. All right, maybe it's the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. Jehovah Witnesses, yeah. And I, I had one where you dynamically created a birthday card, you know, by choosing a greeting, choosing an image, and all that. And the person asked me, could they like instead of doing a birthday card, like do an invitation for something, you know? And I was like, yeah, fine. So I will work with you if you have. Uh, if you were to, to have an issue, but the great observation made, we gamble every day that we get, <laughs> get out of bed. Uh, 
uh, is, is, is fair enough as well. The one thing I always say, too, is it's not like it's real money here. It's not like if you play your blackjack game and you lose so much that someone's going to be knocking on your door trying to collect also, the money. You, when you play my crafts game, you have to agree to in-app purchases. buy chips to play my game. Nice. All right, let's look at this, because, again, I don't remember carving how I carved it up. And this will go over a couple weeks. This part was over the next few weeks of the blackjack game. Initially, your game should allow a single player to play a single hand against a computer, report if the person won or lost, and then repeat. Okay, and this week I want the design. First of all, for the first pass, you start with a fresh deck of 52 cards. All right? You deal out cards. All right? One, uh, uh, Two to, uh, two to the, the player, two to the dealer. One of the dealers is face up, the other one is face down. Okay? You're all familiar with the rules of blackjack, right? Again, I, I had a student from overseas last term that, that wasn't, we had to do a little coaching on it. Now he, now he that's, that's actually how he pays his way through school. He's, uh, no, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, that'd be cool, though. I would, I'd, I'd want credit for it. Uh, but um, so you get dealt two cards. What do you do? You uh, again. Let, let's narrate. Let's narrate the rules of blackjack because for us to understand it, you know, it's one thing to understand it, but it's another thing to understand it and define it in a way that you can program it. All right, those are two different things. So.
16 and under, they take a hit. Or if they're showing a face card. Some look at yay. Okay. Um, we can refine the rules. Um, we can go by the assumption that 16 and under, less than 16, you take a hit. 17 and over, you stay. So in this case, the dealer would have to take a hit. All right. The dealer gets a two. The dealer would have to stay. All right. And in this game, we would win because we're closer to 21 and we haven't gone over. If there's a tie or a push, the dealer wins. Okay. So the dealer wins on that. All right. So, now th there's all kinds of other things that come into play, you know, like the ace can be a value of 1 or 11. If you get blackjack, that is, if you're dealt 21 on the first hand, then you win, all right? Um, there's also things that we will probably not implement, like splitting your cards, where if you get two of the same card, you can split them and play like you have two hands. Like if you had two tens, for example. We don't necessarily have to worry about that. Alan last year, who I don't know, thinks he's Mr. Vegas or something, was coming in like, well, can we do double down? Can we do it's like, look, this is just an intro to programming class, all right? Uh, you want to do yeah, right, right. Okay. So keeping in mind that I'm a big believer of doing a little piece of it, getting it to work, and then refining it. Let's talk about the design of this, all right? When we talk about design in an environment like this, we're going to talk about what the UI is going to look like, all right? And we're going to talk about um, what classes we're going to have, all right? Because we could, do a, we could do a better job with this if we break things down into classes, then... We might have some classes in place if we wanted to, wanted to make, let's say, if suite of card games, like blackjack and poker, because there's similarities between blackjack and poker. There's differences, but there's also similarities. All right, let's t start talking about the user interface. What would the user interface look like? Okay, we won't worry about betting. We'll just say you won, you lost okay. in our first pass. Okay. okay, we could do that. That will be possibly a later enhancement that you are given so many chips and you can bet and, and increase or decrease your bet. But so are you on? We're going to have a button to start the game. Or let's, let's call it deal. A button to hit and a button to stand. What else are we going to have in the UI? We have a couple of, uh, I mean, image views for the cards themselves. Okay. How many image views can we, would we have? See, I, I would use the inflator. Okay. The image views. Exactly. So, we have a second XML file. This will be, let's say, our main XML. What would our inflator XML be? Right, it would represent one card. So, we'll have an XML for new card. All right? And here's one thing that's great about developing in a modular way. Right? If I do this, I could start out having my new card being a couple of labels that put out four of spades, six of hearts. You know, the text description of the name. I could then go and expand it later on to make it an actual image. 
All right. So I can do that without affecting the rest of the game. All right. It's just that we're going to inflate and come up with some different objects. So we're going to have a new card. And ultimately, that's going to be an image view. At first, it could just be a couple text views indicating the suit and the rank of the card. What else do we need on the main XML? Okay. Okay. That's where I'm getting confused too. Is using, when, do you, when do you use like separate layouts? When do I add a linear? When do I not add it? How many is too many? What's not enough? You know what I mean? Well, th those are good questions. Um, some of them I'm not sure there's cut and dried answers for, but we can certainly answer them in this case. Okay. Let's let's sketch out what this is going to look like first, and then we'll we'll talk about what layouts we're going to have. So let's say you're right. We need a layout for the person's cards. And, and that's where this guy is going to get inflated into. All right? Make sense? So every time we add a card, every time they hit hit, we're going to add, we're going to inflate one of these new ones, and we're going to pop it up in that layout. We got the same thing for the dealer. Not yet, anyhow. The, statist the statistics are how much money you got. <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only real one for, for blackjack. We will need some sort of message saying, or results, saying that the person won or lost. Because remember, our focus initially is to play one hand. Every time we start a game, we're starting with a brand new deck. All right? Why is that important? Well, that's important because in real blackjack, all right, I deal out four cards, they get destroyed. So in other words, if the ace of diamonds was in the first hand that I dealt, the ace of diamonds will not be in the second hand that I dealt, all right, until I get so far through the deck and I reshuffle them. All right, but we don't need to. I'm saying we don't need to worry about that at first. We'll start with a brand new deck each time through. All right, so let's talk about this layout in more detail. Keeping in mind this could be done a million different ways. All right, what is the way that's suggested by the way that I've drawn this? This one I assume is straightforward. It's just an image view or a couple text views. This one. What do you think this one is going to consist of? What what um, what views are going to make up this XML file? Okay, we're going to start. Our main container is going to be a linear layout. What, what's that? Okay, there's, well, we've seen three of them, I think. We've seen linear. Linear simply means one after another in a line. We've seen relative, which you can put things to the right of this, to the left of this, all right? And we've seen table, where we have, a, we have table, rows, and columns. All right, so those are the three that we've seen, and there's probably a few more. Okay. But in this case, this is a linear layout, because if I look at this, if I sort of scrunch up my eyes, I got one, two, three, four, five, six things all in a line. And how will this one be oriented? Vertical. Vertical. So our main container... And again, why do we need this? We need this to tell, this helps tell how these things are going to be positioned compared to each other. By linear layout means they're going to be stacked one on top of the other. All right? So this will be a linear layout, and it will be oriented vertically. 
All right. What is this going to be? Exactly. This will be another linear layout. And this is where you said about too little, too much, you know. This is where, yeah, I don't know if there's a right answer, but the complexity of this comes into the fact that like HTML, you can nest these guys. Yeah. So in other words, the overall layout of the page or, or screen is vertically one, two, three, four, five, six. This little component itself is a little one, two, three, linear layout that's oriented horizontally. So, we have another linear layout that is oriented horizontally. What about these three? Another linear, I would say. If they, I mean, if you want them to stay together, I would probably do another linear, unless you want to put something next to it. But, you know, um, we could, the way it's written now, we could simply make these button, button, button. Oh. All right. We could put them within a linear layout, but again, and you're right, that would group them in some manner and it would be easier to change the orientation. But for simplicity's sake, you could button, button, button. All right. Now, if I wanted the buttons to be oriented horizontally, then yeah, I'd put a linear layout that's horizontal and put the buttons in there. What about the dealer's cards? The same, or linear. Linear. Horizontal. And the results could simply be a label, a text field, text view. I always have to remember what day of the week it is so I can use the iOS versus Android version of it. I hope you can do translation in my head. It's the thing that you put words into. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that would be a reasonable layout. Now, could you make it fancier? Sure. You could, for example, you know, create a table with two rows, one for the dealer, one for the player, and add that in there. You can do a lot of different things. It's just your call as to how you're going to do that. The simplest sketch, though, that I have, or the sketch that I have here, sort of suggests that layout. It's always good, in my mind, again, to sort of take inventory. If, you, if you're looking at a problem, say, what part of this problem do I understand and I can do? All right, what part of this problem do I need some work on? Remember, for the first part of this assignment, and we'll work through part of it together, the first part of this assignment is to come up with a design. And what do I mean by a design? I mean sketches of the interface, all right? And I mean a discussion of what other objects you're going to need and what methods you're going to have and so on. Maybe some pseudocode, yeah. All right. So that's the UI piece of it. And again, the nice thing is, is that it would be relatively easy to scale this and make this new card view as involved or as simple as you want it to. All right. Now, let's think about what classes we're going to have. We're going to have one class right off the bat. That is the blackjack, at blackjack game activity. Yeah, when you say, like, um, this is one, one thing I've been wondering. Mm -hmm. When they state a game engine, do they just mean the class that pulls everything together? Or is there something that's specific to a game engine? Do you know what I mean? Have you ever heard that term? Uh, yeah, I have heard it. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily a, a gaming programmer. A, a game engine would be like the would be like the framework used in writing and controlling and running the game. Okay. All right. So, for example, the physics of a game would be part of the game engine. Okay. Um, the graph the graphics rendering 
it'd be part of that, and so on. All right. The idea of an engine implies that you're not necessarily writing all the low-level code yourself. You're using some, you're using a framework that's been developed before, and you're you're simply tapping into that. So one class we're definitely going to have is a blackjack game activity, right? This needs to be an activity to run on your device. What other classes? You need a deck creator. Okay, we need a deck. What else do we need? do we have here? Be a card class. Card. card. What, what, what's a game rules class job to do? Well, yeah, it'd be business oh, logic. Well, sure right. Like, for example, I have two hands. Who won? All right. You think of that as dumb and straightforward, but if you think about it, that's actually a little bit involved, right? If I have two hands, what do I have to do? Well, I look to see if one of them busted. Right, because if they busted, they've lost. The person uh, lost, or the dealer has lost. I have to handle the ace adjustment, right? How aces count as eleven, but sometimes they count as one, and so on and so forth. Uh, again, um, if you got if you got blackjack, if you got twenty one with two cards, you win automatically. All right, so. All the rules for this game would be encoded here. Now, you, you raised a good point. I want to make sure that we, we hear it again and understand it. Why is this not part of this? Okay. This guy's job is sort of to be the glue, to glue the user interface, and all these classes together, all right? So we had our UI that we drew a, a while ago that has how we're going to depict it to the world. Now, we sketched up one way that we could depict it. Um, there's a lot of ways we could show this, all right? This guy works with this guy and these guys to bring everything together. So it's sort of the glue between this. The one term that you hear a lot, you hear it in ASP.NET, um, you hear it in, uh, in iOS development, is model view controller. The model is the business logic. The view is the UI, and the controller is the code that hooks them together. All right? Pardon me? Yeah, no, you know what? No one is born good with it. Yeah. All right, it's not like you know. It, it's not like you know. Maybe those twelve-year-old kids—they got like a new gene or something that came out since yeah. I was born or something—and they're good with it. But yeah, um, it, it is. It's a different way of thinking, and it's a very systematic way. And um, yeah, I don't think anyone's born being good at that. Is this the? Is that the? Um, I don't know if they call it MVC, but it does sort of, we can use it in a manner that fits that mold. Okay. All right. Um, in my mind, whether it's formally called that or not, 
it can be used that way, all right? Just like PHP is like a Wild West programming language where you can go crazy with it. You can write it in a very systematic, object-oriented way, all right? So some languages take you down a path, all right, to a particular style, all right? Other languages give you the flexibility to develop however you want to. We could code this without doing any of these classes, but our code wouldn't be as easy to develop, it wouldn't be as maintainable. If we wanted to next week go around and write a poker game, it, it would, would have to probably start out pretty much from scratch. Is the flag quiz uh, uh, application from the book looks like the, that MBC style because they have a main activity that they have a quiz fragment. It mm -hmm. looks like the main activity is handling general stuff, then you get into right. the quiz fragment. Right, handles the details of the quiz. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As generally speaking, it's just like I, I talked about like event handlers and that, this guy's job is like to delegate. This guy doesn't do much on his own. You know, he, he tells other folks to go and do this or do that. I would say we're missing one class. Maybe. Maybe not. We may have already covered it. Let me pose this, and then you guys can discuss. What about a class for the hand? For the actual gameplay? No, for the actual hand. In other words, if I'm dealt a 2, a 5, and an 8, is there a separate object that contains the 2, the 5, and the 8? Those, a collection of three um, cards. Well, that's what I'm asking. I, I would think that that would be covered in, within the player. Okay. Because then you could just add that whatever it is, method or an array or whatever, to the player, and then just have the computer and the player inherit that from the player class. Because every player has a hand. Everybody, everybody at the table is dealt a hand. So that would work for inheritance as far as putting that into the player class. Okay. So, and this is what, we, we did this last semester, and this is sort of what we discovered. You more or less need a player class or a hand class. If you, you could like look at it from the perspective, say that that's a player, or you could look at it from the perspective of it's a hand. It's essentially the same thing. You know, it's like the entity that is involved in this particular game, and that includes the cards that you play. All right, the next step then is to be um, looking about, looking at the attributes and methods. Now, before, before we talk about this, a thing to keep in mind is that, I don't know how you guys came up with this list. It's a good list, all right? But one way to come up with this list, if it's something maybe you weren't as familiar with, okay, we have to make a cricket game, all right? I have no idea how they play cricket. I've watched it on TV. They throw a ball, someone hits it, then they run around for a while, all right? No, curling. curling, there you go. That's another good one. You'd need a broom class, uh, a big rock class. <laughs> There's bound to be another name for it. All right, but the idea is, is well, you guys did a good job on this, is remember that Effectively, when you code something, you're making, especially if you're following good object-oriented principles, you're making a, essentially a software model of that little world. You're making a software model of the blackjack world. Well, if two people were playing blackjack, what would you see? Well, you'd see two people, so you'd see players. There'd be a deck of cards. There'd be individual cards. Um, there would be, um, oh, e yeah, there'd be cards, there'd be a collection of cards called the deck, there'd be the players, which have a hand of cards, then there'd be the rules somewhere in someone's head, 
right? So you come up with real world. It, it, it's best if you think like in real world terms. Like, and, and sometimes I've heard the word actors, not actors like you know Oscar award winning actors, but the players, the participants. And they can be like actual people, or they can be inanimate things. Like a deck of cards is, is a player in the blackjack world. It's a participant in the blackjack world. All right. So by keeping a real-life focus, I think, is a good way to identify it. In a nutshell, when you start describing these things, all right, when you start describing the game of blackjack, if you wanted to explain it to someone that didn't know how to play it, if you were to write out the explanation, there's a good chance that the nouns would be probably many of your classes. Not always. It could be an attribute, I suppose. But, well, let's see. People, you know, a couple people sit down. They have a deck of cards. The dealer deals one card to the player, one card to themselves, one card to the player, one card to themselves. Already we have like three of those classes defined, right? We have the player, we have the deck, and we have the cards. All right. Now, classes are characterized by what they know and what they can do. All right. Let's run through this with deck. Let's, let's forget about the activity for now. The activity we're going to assume is going to have stuff like button click handlers and stuff like that because this job is to glue everything together. What are some either attributes or methods of a deck? There's 52 cards. Okay. So an attribute of a deck is that there is an array of 52 cards. So, what does that mean in our object-oriented world? It means we're going to create a class for card. When we create a deck, we are going to create 52 instances of that card object. All right? Yes? Um, you would, you, yes, you would have to add an image for the card that you're not seeing the face for, but that really is one of these cards you're simply not, just not showing it. In other words, if I deal out the cards and my, I deal down the ten of uh, clubs and it's face up, that's still one of the 52 clubs. shown the front or the back. The front, you have an image for the front. All right. I, um, I think I, I, I think I, I can supply that to you. I think I can supply the 52 card images. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure I did this, but, but I'll, I'll double check. The back is simply, you'll, there'll be one image for the back. So all 52 cards will have the same back image. But you can handle that. You can handle that in, in, yeah, in, in the UI. The UI, when you show a card, when you display a card and you inflate it, all right, you look and you say, is this a card that's face up or face down? If it's a card that's face down, then you don't display the card that corresponds to that. You display the back image. So to answer your question, yes, you would have to handle that. But you're not going to handle that by adding another card here. A deck really only has 52 cards. There'll be an extra image out there that you'll display, all right, to be sure. So in that sense, yes, there'll be 53 card images. But the deck itself is only going to have 52 cards. Where are these cards going to get created? Where are they? Yeah, where are they going to get created? All right. That 
actually sounds like a good approach to me in a constructor of the deck. What does it mean to make a deck? It means to prepare the 52 cards that you're going to have. So the constructor of the deck. is going to make 52 cards. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me, small point here. We've already said our focus is just playing one hand for now. Still, if we deal the ace of spades, we don't want to deal the ace of spades again. All right? What physically happens when I deal a card in against in someone's hand? What happens? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's no longer in the deck. Right. So if I take if if I go and I have 52 cards and I'm the dealer and I deal the first card, ace of spades, the ace of spades is in the hand, it's no longer in the deck. All right? So this is has sort of a max size of 52 or an initial size of 52. But actually what we want to do is we want to decrement it every time we deal, every time we deal a card. So what would be better than an array here? What's a construct within Java that allows us to have a variable number of items? An array list. An array list. Exactly. So we're going to have an array list. So we have an array list that the constructor will make 52 of them. What other methods that we, would we have with the deck? Yeah. I guess for loading the array list with each card. Okay, that's done in the constructor. If you were watching someone play blackjack, what would, what would the deck be doing? Okay, and what what would you call that when the deck decreases? The card is dealt. All right, so it'll be a method to deal a card. All right, what will okay? What else do you do with the deck in blackjack? Shuffle. You shuffle. So, we have our deck of cards, array list, initialize at 52 cards, we shuffle it, all right? What is shuffling? It means randomly ordering the array list. Gee, how can you do that? I don't know, but Deedle knows how to do it, because Deedle did it in the flag game. And if you have a hard time finding it, I can find it for you. I think it's just a shuffle method on an array list. Yeah, it's, I think it's a random. I, yeah, I don't, I don't remember the exact method. If you have trouble finding it, we can find it. So, okay, so that's going to be easy. We're going to shuffle our array list. Deal card. What's that method look like to deal a card? It's going to take away from the array list, and then it's going to send it to the player. Okay, very good. Deal card is going to grab the top card on the array list, right? No dealing from the bottom, right? That's cheating, right? You gotta pick the top card off the array list, give it to a player. So, what do you think the return function of this is gonna be? A card, all right? And so, it's going to return the card that's in the top position, and then it's gonna remove that card from the list. All right? Pretty easy. Okay. Player, what attributes, now let's go down the card and then we'll come back up to player. Card, what attributes exist on a card? Number? Number and a suit.
to change this from number to like that either. I want something that includes numbers and words like ace, king, queen, jack. Could call type of card, which could be in the car card game or the game rules class. Yeah, because suit really is unnecessary. Well, suit isn't necessary, but the bigger issue is the fact that an ace, you can't assign a value to an ace by itself. All right? In the context of blackjack, if all I can see is an ace here, and I ask you, what's the value of it? You can't give me a definitive answer. What can give you a definitive answer? If I look at the whole hand, all right? If I look at all the cards in the hand, then I can say, well, gee, there's an ace and a 10. I want that ace to be 11. Or there's an ace and two 10s. I want that ace to be one. So I can't just look at a single card and have a value. So maybe that kind of goes in the rules. Player. What's the player have? Yeah, an, a hand, which effectively is an array list of cards. Now we could add other things here, not necessarily a priority for our first round, but we could add things like the person's name. We could add their balance you know, how much they, how much they have, and any other characteristics um, of that. Rules class. What should at least be in this rules class? Given two hands, or given two players, which one won? All right. It's going to have to uh, evaluate the hand. Right. That, well, realistically, it should be pretty easy because if you can, from the card class itself, you can just pass in two values. The, the, because every, you're adding, essentially, you're adding everything up, so you just pass in 20, 19. Right? You know what I mean? You get, you get in that rules class, you get like, is this hand busted? What is the value of this hand? All right. What is the value of this card? Right? Because it's not all straightforward. Uh, again, the ace muddying the logic just a teeny bit. Now, thing to keep in mind is that when you're developing this, and what's all, this, what's, what's all ready for this next week is just the design of it. All right. Which we kind of give you a pretty good head start on here, all right? And then you can start working on uh, the coding on it once you've sort of had your design worked out. But keep in mind, don't get hung up on something small. For example, when I did this last semester, I had students that were really freaked about how to handle an ace. They just like, well, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's 11, how do you, it's like, I don't know, make it up. 
all right? Make it always worth 11, all right? And your game won't be correct yet, but at least is working with just a couple little catches that you have to um, run down and, and fix. So don't worry or don't obsess over getting like this perfect all-in-one go, all right? Um, once you have this down, I would suggest the easiest thing to do would be to simply have, create the deck class, create the, well, you'd create all the classes, and then simply have a button, a hit button, and a reset button. You don't even have to worry about the dealer yet, all right? And just deal the player two cards, say what the value of their hand is, and then just let them keep taking hits as long as they want, even if they hit 70. Right, because that will show you, if you have that done, you have a lot of it done. You have a lot of those classes done. You just really need to get the rules and get the activity sort of talking to the rules um, um, down once you have that part done. Questions over any of this? I forgot to bring my giant deck of cards to class. A student gave them to me last term. And, of course, it's lucky that I'm here, let alone <laughs> remembering to bring anything. So I guess thank goodness for small favors. All right. Are there any questions?